Wonder what it's like to be an academia pharmacist? Well, I'm an associate professor and board certified critical care pharmacist. And unlike what many believe, I do not dispense medications all day. I also do not teach all day, every day at the university. Find out three areas academia pharmacists focus on, and later on, you'll find out a day in the life of an academia pharmacist. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Jessica Louie, and I'm an associate professor, board certified critical care pharmacist, and entrepreneur. I help people find meaning beyond a job title and let go of burnout. Today we're talking about academia pharmacy and what it's like to be in this area, and later on we're talking about a schedule of an academic pharmacist. I will note that this video is not sponsored or associated with my employer. This is my personal opinion. The first question I get is, what are the three core components of academia pharmacy? They include teaching, scholarship, and service. Now, when we're talking about each of these, I'm going to go into examples of what each of them are. I will note that each institution or each department is a little bit different on the emphasis and where the focus is for faculty members. So it does depend on what institution you work for or you're looking to work for. When we think about the teaching component, there can be different areas we teach in. In the school of pharmacy as a professor, you can think of the traditional settings where we have a very large classroom setting and we're doing the traditional teaching environment with lectures. There's also small group facilitation and discussions, and you may have seen this in different types of small groups in your own classroom setting or in elective courses. There's also leading and facilitating laboratory work. So laboratory work could include sterile or non-sterile compounding or other type of communication type of laboratory work. And finally, teaching can also involve precepting. Precepting, it can include precepting pharmacy students on their IPI or API rotations. It could also mean precepting postgraduates, or residents, or fellows. So teaching can involve a variety of different areas depending on the institution and the department. Scholarship can take on different meaning in different institutions and in different settings. I like to break down scholarship into four different types. First is our research scholarship, next is our learning and teaching scholarship, next is our creative scholarship, and then there could be other forms of scholarship. For our research scholarship is what a lot of people would think of traditional research and scholarship. It's the research and scholarship that does end up in peer-reviewed manuscripts and in grant writing traditionally. And this could include bench research where you're using scientific animals in your research and other methods. It could include clinical research where you're using patient data in your research. And these could be prospective or retrospective type of studies. They could then go on to peer-reviewed manuscript publications, grant writing, writing in textbooks, presenting at conferences, those types of activities for research in our traditional research and scholarship environment. Next up is learning and teaching scholarship. A lot of people will refer to this as SOTL, Scholarship of Teaching and Learning, and this is traditionally in the academia setting where you are studying different modes and methods of teaching and learning Sometimes this involves surveying students or seeing outcomes from a traditional setting to a new innovation type of teaching and learning modality, and then sharing best practices in literature. Next up is creative research, and this could be a lot of different creative outlets. Uh, right now, a lot of people would consider podcasting, YouTube videos, uh, digital platforms as more creative scholarship, and it's a new way to get information out there to best suit student needs and best suit the next generation in our profession. Other forms of scholarship that don't fit in the other three categories could fit into the other category, and this could include precepting or mentoring a student's thesis or dissertation, original project. It could include keynote speaking, lots of other forms of scholarship that just don't fit within those other three categories. The last component of academia is service. And service can come in a lot of different forms. We could take service to the profession as a whole. We could take service to the university as a whole. And then we could take service to our department, pharmacy practice department as a whole. So we can break it down into the big categories down into the smaller categories of service. So in terms of looking at service to the department and then to the university, this could mean serving on different types of committees. Uh, a lot of times there's different types of committees that you can serve on from curriculum committee, assessment committee, admissions committee, professional development committee, and so on. And this could be at the department level or it could be at the university level. 
There's also leadership councils and task force that you can serve on in both of those levels. Service to the university in the department also includes faculty advising of students and faculty advising of student organizations. And as you know, in the pharmacy profession, there's lots of different student organizations that could be part of the university and the school of pharmacy. So having faculty advisors to those organizations, as well as serving as faculty advisors to the students that come in each year. In terms of service to the profession, this can also look very different depending on if it's at the local, state, or national, or international level, whether it's serving on smaller committees, larger committees, or task forces. You could also be representing the university in a larger capacity for the profession, and you could be on planning committees for conferences um, or other events as part of your profession. That is an overview of the three components of academia as a pharmacist. And now I'm gonna go into a typical day in the life of an academia pharmacist. And this is my personal opinion, and this is my personal experience. As an associate professor, I work in a setting that is more teaching heavy. So about 50% of my time is spent in the teaching component of those three categories. The other 25 to 30% is service, and the other 20 to 25% is research and scholarship. So that's the breakdown of my three components of academia. In terms of the scheduling and day-to-day -day life as an academia pharmacist, this will depend on the scheduling of your institution, You know whether it's an all-year-round type of school or it's a traditional two-semester type of school. I work in a traditional two-semester type of school where we are fall semester and spring semester with a summer break that lasts several weeks, you know, up to three months, and a winter break where we have more of our simulation or ippy-appy student rotations. Of course, even during all these breaks, faculty work all year round, so this is um, a misconception where faculty are still working during all breaks that students have, so we are working and just refocusing our attention during those breaks. Thanks. Faculty usually work traditional 40 hour weeks, uh, Monday through Friday with weekends and holidays off. So a day in the life, during the semester I may be teaching anywhere between two, four, and six hours a day you know, two, three, four days a week. And then that continues throughout the semester. Depending on what classes I'm teaching, it could be part of my laboratory skills labs or traditional didactic teaching. And then afterwards, then you incorporate some service or scholarship into that time. So usually during the semester, there's more focus on teaching and a little bit less focus on scholarship and research. And then when we are on break, when we have summer breaks or winter breaks, when we have a little bit less didactic teaching, there's a lot more focus on service and a lot more focus on research and scholarship. This is where you can get a lot done for data gathering, for manuscript writing, for presenting at conferences, collaborating with other faculty at other institutions, making sure that we're assessing different things on committees, I'm on two different committees within the institution and then larger committees within the profession as well. So there is work that takes precedent depending on the time of year, and that's why a day in the life does look different for everyone. Let's take a typical day during the semester. Uh, I am teaching at 8 a.m. I teach from 8 a.m. to noon, our second year students, and then we have a lunch break from 12 to 1, and then I teach again from 1 to 4, the skills lab. So that day is a little bit more packed than the traditional day. The next day I may only teach from eight to noon and then have a break and be able to write exam questions, prep for the next day's lectures, look at assessments and start grading all the individual assessments of the 60 to 90 students in the classroom. Now during a break, a typical day may look like a committee, a assessment committee meeting from nine to noon or nine to 11 a.m., then having our designated responsibilities after that meeting to catch up on, and then meeting a professional organization from one to two, having a different task force from two to three, having a faculty meeting from four to 6 p.m., and ending the day. So it can look very different when we are in the semester teaching versus focus more on service and scholarship outside of the semester a little bit. A typical day in the summer may look like working on preparation for a committee. So 
blocking out 9 to 11 a.m. to work on some prep for our committee, then working on some scholarship from 11 to 1 and meeting with a scholarship team from different universities where we're collaborating with, and then working on the responsibilities and the next steps after that meeting for a couple hours. So a day in the life of an academic pharmacist does vary every season of the year and will depend on your own institution and your responsibilities. But that's you know one example of the day in the life of an academia pharmacist. And I hope that you have learned a little bit more so that if you are interested in pursuing this specialty as a pharmacy student or pharmacy resident, you look into it, you consider it, and please reach out with any other questions you have. Make sure you're also watching our videos on burnout and simplifying your life. Until next time, spark joy.